study models are kind of like little three-dimensional sketches, kind of snapshots in the design process. They're meant to be quick to build, not too precious, really just open-ended. And I think that's the thing that makes them so useful for me. Making something tangible, something you can hold in your hands, it just helps me access different ideas, ideas I can't get anywhere else. So I've been working on the site plan and we have a little more contour information. We wanted to know more about where this granite whale's back was and the exact topographic features right around where we're gonna site the house. And that's important just because we need to set the floor levels and make sure if we're trying to keep this building close to grade on the uphill side, we need to know exactly what those elevations are immediately surrounding the building. So we have this new information. I've come and updated the contour model. And then what we're gonna do is I just roughly cut out one contour. So we're just gonna sort of align that one contour, use that as a known reference point. And once we get that aligned, because this is cork, I can just take these little push pins and I'm gonna push those in at the corners of these buildings. Really, you don't need to do all the corners because as you're building the model, things will self-register. Okay, so we've registered this line. We know how far the garage, the barn piece is off of that. And before I did this, I sort of pre-cut these so I can just remove the sheet of paper. And then what we're left with are the push pins. So these push pins then tell us that we have the right registration between what we've drawn on the site plan and the actual contours on the model. And then we can start laying out the main volume of our house. We know that orientation is correct. And then also the barn. So for this model, I'm using 16th inch basswood sheets. And I start by cutting out the floor plates. So I'm working with a floor plan here. You don't need one, just makes things a little bit faster. Once I have those floor plates, then I can use those as bases to begin building walls and gluing walls on top of. I have some basic elevations and you can see that here, but I really am treating this like it's sort of an experiment. So I'm gonna test out some of my ideas and then see how they look. Now I had this idea that I wanted to use a lot of glass at the west facing wall of the living room. And so here I'm just laying out what that might look like and cutting that out. And as I stand it up and I start to look at it, I'm not so sure, but I'll glue it in place, have a look at it. And that's what this is for, it's a study model. So it's meant to study relationships. So here I'm gluing up the gable ends of that shed roof form. And then I'm just adding little structural members in here just to give an idea of how the roof might be supported and also delineate space in that main living volume. Messy, imperfect, doesn't have to be perfect. And I'll repeat this for each one of the other volumes that we're working with. So this is the master volume and I'll also do it for the barn volume that you see here. And that's the gable end of the barn wall. From there, I'll start adding in the roofs and I'll start with the flat roofs. And you can see here, I'm gluing them inside of the exterior wall. So the exterior wall comes up proud of these flat roofs. And that's actually how you would build it in real life. It just looks a little cleaner that way. Here I'm laying out some score lines. This is meant to be a metal roof. And what I'm realizing is the scores are just way too subtle. So I think I'm gonna add some ribs here and this is just fine balsa wood material. Just cut these into little strips and then I'll glue them in place using some Elmer's white glue, PVA. I like the white glue for these areas because it's just more forgiving than using hot glue. The finished product will be a little bit cleaner and won't have all these glue strings to uh, contend with. One tip for you when you're making your roof forms, if you add a cleat on the low side of the roof, you can just rest it on the walls and it won't slip off. Now the transitions between the building and the site are really important. So I wanted to find some way of modeling what this foundation might look like. And I know it's going to be a pier foundation. And I also know that these decks are gonna act as these transition elements between the site and the building. And I started off by making these solid decks. And as I got looking at it, it just didn't feel appropriate. And so here I've just kind of abstracted this idea of deck planks, almost like boardwalk planks. And I feel like it just, although it's not accurate, it just feels more like a deck to me.
Now I'm gonna start layering on some details here too. Anything you can do to add shadow and depth to these small models, even though this isn't accurate to scale, I feel like it really enhances the feel and the suggestion that this is actually a barn door that's riding on a track. In real life, this track would be absolutely huge, but it's got the right sort of sketchy feel to it, and I think you can take those artistic liberties as you're constructing your models to suggest design ideas. This is the barn and workshop space, so that barn door would open the workshop space to a sunny southern courtyard. And I'm going to come in and add another couple of sliding barn doors at various points. It's kind of part of the design language of this project. Subtle details that suggest how a space might be used. They say a lot about the character of the space. I'm just taking a small dowel, cutting it off at the angle of the roof, which is a five and 12 pitch. And then I'm just gonna use some white glue to glue it in between the metal roof ribs here. And I've added a little kerf to show the metal cap detail. Now we have to fit the building to the site and for the master wing, that's sitting the highest above grade. So here I'm just adding some posts and then when we get it in the site, we'll look and see what we're gonna, how we're gonna address that. And I'm using T pins to mark out where I want to cut the site model to fit the building to it. So I just overlay the building here and then I mark each end and then I can just cut that one contour out. So this level is the one I wanna remove and I wanna bring it down to this level here. So everything will sit flat. You can see I cut everything down to this level and now it just slips right in there. That's fitting better and these posts rest properly. Now there's one more element here. This is the screen porch and the screen porch is designed to be a little bit remote from the house. It sits to the southwest of the main living volume at least tentatively, and it's gonna use similar design elements, a similar design language. In other words, we'll have metal roof and some shingles and some exposed wood framing, but the character of it is gonna feel much more open and exposed. The screen porch obviously has a different feel to the interior space. It's also gonna have a pretty different aspect on the site. So we're really viewing it as another destination in here. You can see this is just a sketch, so it's not perfect. It's just meant to show the size in relation to the other elements in the composition. And then also that it is much more open than the other elements. So it's literally just a little sort of timber frame piece with a roof element on the top of it. And here I'm building up the gable and walls and I'm cutting this wall so that the roof will sit on it flat. And this will be our metal roof. And we're gonna build up this metal roof in the same way that we've built the other roof elements. So we're just gonna start adding all the pieces. Got the main living wing, got the master wing that sits over here. We've got the barn. And I had to do a little bit of contour repair here so it's hardly noticeable. And all I did was just replace the cork and push some hat pins into it. And I can see my how it's meant to line up here. Then we have our screen porch. And right now the screen porch is sitting over on this end. We can start adding in our roofs. We have our roof cleat here. These buildings will have other openings in the walls, but I think what's important about building a study model like this, a little sketchy model, is to really show what areas are open versus what areas are more solid. So really that contrast between open and solid is what I'm trying to depict. And then I've just got a little couple of little ramps here that go with the barn piece. So that's where you access it. Now there are some site features that I'm not showing. So there's a turnabout here, potentially. There's a parking court here. You'll notice if you look back at the site plan, um, those features aren't modeled. As we look down at this face here, it seems like, you know, obviously we're gonna have some posts su supporting this deck, but I feel like we wanna do some fill. So we wanna move some boulders probably that we're gonna pull out of the excavation for the site, probably down here, or this needs to be buffered a little bit with some vegetation. So 
All I've done here is cut out a strip of quar mat, kind of fits with the monochromatic look. And I'm just gonna kind of plant that. So all I've done with this is uh, put a little pin on the underside of it, and then I can press it right into the cork. You know, this is the first wall that I cut. This is the first one that I glued to the base. And you can see that I've, I made that large cut here. And with this study model, I've just put on another layer on the outside because I didn't like the way it looked. To me, this was just a much clearer expression of the opening and the connection between the front and the back of this building. So, you know, I love this idea that there's a connection between the forest side and the water side in here. And this just felt like too much glass uh, extending to the roof. So filling this in, you know, I didn't rebuild another model. I didn't have to rebuild this entire facade. I just basically overlaid another piece on top of it. And that's the real value of the study model. It just allows you to quickly iterate and see what's working and what's not. You know, by the same token, we can look at twisting this volume around and maybe we wanna look at, you know, a roof form that slopes in this direction. So it's, it's a great reason to not glue these down you know, if we wanted to fit more with the topography on this end of the building, we could, you know, have a series of steps that come down to a lower uh, master bedroom wing that sits at this end. And this model allows us to quickly study those relationships. Mm -hmm.